شاطئ لي شغله انا صلي على الله بس هلا هيدي جروبات هدول هن هن يعني Mr. Shabi, um, thank you so much for giving us some time to, to, to talk to us all night. Um, this is our second, my second visit to uh, Syria. Yeah. Um, my first time in Aleppo last week. Yeah. Uh, I saw the destruction and devastation and it was heartbreaking. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the terrorist occupation of, of the city that you are in people? Exactly. I mean, they various fight against groups. Uh, some directly tied to uh, Zawahiri in, in, in Tora Bora in Afghanistan, like the Nusra, which is the main kind of branch in Syria. They, they call themselves self-declared and were tied with Islamic Brotherhood also under the name of FSA, but they are all together in one, you know, one entity. They conquered the city, the eastern parts of Aleppo in August 2012. Uh, they took us by surprise, they entered, they conquered our city. In these areas that they conquered, two million people used to live there. Immediately, like a few weeks, out of the two million, 1.5 million evacuated and ran away from these terrorists. And you know, with four years of their occupation, the number of two million dropped to 113,000, the one that we found when we liberated it in, in December 2016. So this is what happened during this occupation. They looted factories. They looted 35,000 factories, some transferred to Turkey with the, with the help of the Turkish police and intelligence. They looted our uh, historical monuments. They, uh, they, they bombed with explosive tunnels the, the old city of Aleppo. Uh, anyone who can go there and check the old city of Aleppo knows exactly that it was bombed from beneath, not by any uh, aerial airstrike. Uh, we were there and we know what happened. They, uh, for instance, the Chamber of Industries, three-story building, they bombed uh, with the explosive tunnel uh, uh, four, uh, three years ago. Uh, many uh, historical mosques were bombed the same way. More than 20 churches were bombed. So basically, they, they had one goal, to destroy the ancient city of Aleppo and to loot whatever they can find. They invented something called the Hellcat to use exactly to use to use purposely, deliberately on civilians to scare civilians, the civilian population, because the western parts of Aleppo under government control, the population increased, hiked from one million to around two million people, and uh, they wanted to scare these people off. While you're supporting this government, you have to be punished. You are part of the government. These are civilians. So they used this help plan against these civilians, and we lost documented, documented by name and by date of, uh, of death, some 15,000 civilians. Uh, one third of them are kids. With the help plan, and of course, not a single word from any NATO media. Not a single word. And with these uh, children, civilians, they were killed in, in the western side of the or, or was that western the side. In our side, yeah. you know, in the western side, but deliberately. Hell cannons, and Hell cannon, and deliberately targeting Christian quarters, the Christian uh, neighborhoods, and Armenian neighborhoods, and our neighborhoods. I mean, but mainly the Christian and Armenian, because they, want to, they wanted to uh, empty the city from its multicultural, uh, you know, uh, structure. They wanted only to be Wahhabi or hardcore Sunni. They don't want Christians, they don't want Armenians, they don't want uh, moderate Sunnis, they don't want anything. So uh, this is what they did. So, so in terms of the total um, civilians killed in East and West Aleppo over five years, do, do you have a, a bigger... Uh, we know exactly 15,000 were killed in the western parts of Aleppo. Okay. And uh, of course, much fewer number were killed as uh, taken human shields oh. and hostages. Uh, they used to hide in, in, inside the... Uh, people houses and fire at the army from inside uh, people houses. Yeah. They took all hospitals, they turned hospitals, our main hospitals into uh, bunkers, into command centers because they are heavily fortified buildings. And th yeah. That's what they said. Okay. And uh, many of our schools were turned into training centers for Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Headquarters. And uh, headquarters. Yeah. This is what we found when we entered. And when we, when uh, after the liberation, we saw Qaeda flags, we saw ISIS flags even. ISIS one was there in 2013 also. And it shared the same headquarters as the FSA in the same floor in the Eye Hospital. Mm -hmm. And it used to 
uh, run its affairs from the same area, from the same place in alliance with the FSA. Margaret. Yes. Um, we've seen over the past five, six years, the Syrian ambassador to the, to the United Nations, he talks about what happened in Aleppo, even as it was happening, yeah. and he talked about the, the theft of the factories, and stolen factories taken north to Turkey, as you mentioned, um, and described it as um, an attack on the livelihoods of the people of Aleppo, of, of their, their means to live and their, their way to make a living. Of course. Um, this has been ignored in the Western press, exactly. in the Western media. Exactly. Uh, has there been any comment from the Turkish government as to... They deny it. They deny it, although we have, uh, you know, video footage, yes, we, have, yes. we have documents, we have, the, you know, confessions, we have many things. I mean, that we have the people who lost their factory. Yes. And I'm not talking about 100 or 200, I'm talking about thousands. Yes. We, you know, we used to have around 50,000 factories, 35 officially registered and 15,000, you know, like, shadow economy. Most of them were, uh, were, were looted. Uh, to Turkey. Most of, most of them they took, they, they transferred heavy equipment. They did not, I'm, not talking, tools, I'm yeah. not talking about sewing uh, machines, yeah, small big, machines. Big I'm talking tools. about caterpillar machines, I'm talking about German machines, yeah. Swiss machines. Uh, heavy equipment that can only be transferred on, on heavy trucks, on paved you know, roads, yeah. on, on, on highways, under the eye of the Turkish government. Transferred to Turkey. And, and then re-erected in exactly. and many and many times yes and many times uh, uh, industrialists uh, they, they, they come to the, the chamber of industry they call me or they tell me turkish experts are in my factory now what should i do turkish experts along with the gangs yeah. the gangs don't know how to disassemble factories you know production yeah. lines yeah, yeah. and they don't know which machine is in exactly, which, exactly yeah. or which one which ones are not valid so they brought with them Turkish experts. Turkish experts, they know exactly which production line is making, is, is, is uh, causing a heavy competition with Turkish companies. So they rob it. Other machines, they destroy it. For instance, there is one area inside Aleppo called Leramun, industrial zone. It's an ancient, an old industrial zone, like 50, 60 years ago. 1,000 factories, 1,000 factories, completely looted, completely. Even the copper was taken from inside the walls. And the wires. The wires. And everything. Everything. We went there and saw it. It's still there. It's still a witness. Nothing has no, uh, no, uh, uh, you know, uh, installation has been taken place since then because the nearby area there is Al-Qaeda also and the hill nearby. So no one can go there and fix his own factory. Yeah. It's still a witness to this crime. You promised to to file. Uh, lawsuits against yes. the Turkey. Yes. Can we, we filed should a lawsuit. We accused him of this uh, robbery this is and piracy. International court. Piracy in 2013, and we gathered all the evidence. And uh, we 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 filed a petition. We filed against him, and then our Ministry of Justice said we will follow. So we gave everything to the Ministry of Justice. But this is the, we offer this to any honest, you know, uh, organization. NGO in the world to, to really, this is a piracy. Yeah. Now, now we are the victim of this piracy, but in the, tomorrow who knows who's going to be the new victim. Yes. Is it going to be some uh, Bulgarians, yeah. maybe, yeah. Romanians, I don't know. Iranians. Exactly. Yeah. We don't know. He did this to us. Yeah. It's proven. It's proven crime. Do you think because um, Turkey is an ally of the UK and the US, do you think that Western governments Knew yeah, turned in. They, yeah, they, they, they knew and gave their consent. Of course. How do you, how okay? How how do you think these NATO weapons reached the eastern parts of the world? Mm -hmm. I saw them. I saw the, the you know the warehouses. Yeah. NATO missiles. And they're coming in through to down down missiles. Yes. Uh, anti anti tank anti tank, anti -tank missiles. Yes. How did these advanced weapons arrive to eastern parts of the world through Turkish trucks? Through the Turkish border, yeah. we did not import them. Yeah. They arrived through the Turkish border, yeah. and we have we have also proved that some Turkish uh, Red Crescent, when they used to to go there and to help these terrorists, the Qaeda terrorists, mm -hmm. to take them to Turkish hospitals, they used to deliver these weapons. Yeah. Also, we have footage of this, yeah. mm -hmm. but unfortunately, nobody's talk, talking about this. I mean, with this uh, now, in, uh, with this uh, with this homegrown terrorism that is now flourishing in the West. Yes. Does anyone ask this question? Yeah. What would happen if these terror groups 
you know, use this American weapons, these NATO weapons against these, you know, the Europeans yes. or the, yes. you know, no one asked this question? No, this is a ticking yeah. time bomb for the rest exactly. of the world. They are, they are now heavily armed, yeah. heavily armed. And also experienced, because many of these people came over maybe for what they thought were ideological reasons, you know, so inexperienced. Now they have experience of weapons, explosives, exactly. Exactly. And, and I read that there's 360,000 foreign terrorists yes. in Syria today yes. from maybe 100 countries. Yes. At some point, they have to go home. Yes. And this is UN. This is UN uh, stats, yes. so that they don't accuse us of making making up uh, yeah. numbers. Yeah. The UN admitted last year that some 100 or 200,000 foreign jihadis yeah. came to Syria. We all we all know what happened to the US when two brothers in Boston. Yes. Two. Yeah. What happened in, the, in London when one, yeah. in Montreal only guy, one guy, right? In, in Paris, two or three. Yeah. We have now how many? Hundreds of thousands. Exactly. Right? I don't want to say hundreds of thousands. I'm going to say 10,000. Okay. But still. 10,000. Yes. Let's say 10,000. Yeah. Even though this number is oh, yeah. way, so way conservative. Undisputed. But I'm talking about 10, thousands, thousands, yeah. thousands. Yeah. Uh, from uh, from uh, Igor, from you know, Uzbekistan, mainly, yeah. from all these fanatics are here in the thousands. Yeah. So how can we deal with this? And, and there's also been reports um, that these, in, in Syria itself, uh, in Aleppo, there was a, a, like a command control bunker, and, and this had uh, Saudi intelligence yes. and possibly British, Israeli intelligence, maybe US intelligence. Yes. Can you confirm that? I, I, I read that some months ago. Yes, they have many, many command bunkers, not only one. Yeah. And even in the Khan Shifun incident, uh, it was a bunker, it was a Qaeda bunker dug inside a mountain. Mm -hmm. it, you know how we got this uh, footage from them? Right. When they were, yeah. they, 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 they many them. of themselves, they yeah. filmed themselves carrying kids to the bunk, the Qaeda bunker. Yeah. This is not a school, yeah. this is a Qaeda bunker. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this seems to be the first crisis where people, terrorists, have openly filmed their crimes. Exactly. And put them on Facebook, on exactly, YouTube, exactly, without exactly. any sense of openly, guilt or shame. Or exactly. We reached a rock bottom low yes. in, in ethics and yeah. in morality. Yeah. And, in and in violating international law regarding terrorism. Yeah. Um, just to go back to the piracy um, again, uh, early on in the, in the crisis, there were, uh, in the eastern part of Syria, uh, Lots of oil was also being stolen. Yes, oil, cotton, wheat, uh, various agriculture products, factories, and personal belongings. And again, this was all coming back to Turkey <laughs> yes. and being sold yes. on the, the EU, the, the hypocrites, EU. the hypocrites in the EU, put a ban on us. We cannot sell our own oil and gas. But ISIS they, can sell but, oil. But ISIS can sell it, with discounted yeah. to Turkey, and Turkey can sell it to the to world. Europe, yeah, yes, the world. it's our stolen oil. Yeah. And again, is that something that you're going to take up with the international courts? And we hope so. We hope so. I mean, not, not only us. This has to be, you know, uh, big effort. Yeah. By every country. Because yeah, yeah. For all. Um, how are your allies around the world? Because Syria has many friends. Um, Iran, Russia, China, lots of Latin American countries. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel that support from, from other nations? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, but we need more support. We need yeah. also support from from uh, from communities in the EU, in the United States, yeah. in Canada, we, we have a lot of people are with us. A lot of people yeah. understand what's going on. Yeah. But we need to put an, a stop to these hypocrite politicians. Yeah. That they that what they care about these politicians only about the petrodollar. Mm -hmm. That's what they yeah. care. Yeah. They just want the Saudi money. And they don't care about anything else. Even they are endangering these policies are endangering their own constituencies. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, when I support Al Qaeda in Syria. Can you guarantee that this scorpion, this guy, would not hit me back? Of course. Yeah. yeah. This is blowback, they call in the West. Exactly. Uh, when, when terrorism exactly. comes home. It's exactly. happened all, all Exactly. But the, um, in terms of history, the, the British government has a long and glorious history, uh, a, shameful, a shameful history, unfortunately, unfortunately, of colluding with radical Islam over decades, even maybe a century, yes. even before the, the formation of yes. uh, the Saudi Kingdom. Um, and they've done it for their own strategic interests, not for the interests of exactly. pe English people or exactly. British people, but for the interests of big corporations, uh, oil companies, and things like that. Exactly. Um, it's happened all the way through history, and, and certainly from Afghanistan in 1979, before the Soviet invasion, exactly. 
we were, we were this playing. This is what they do. This is what they do. They, exactly the same they, they use the, the, the boogeyman tactics. Yes. You know, they demonize yes. the, the, the leadership. Yes. And then they, they, they bring terrorism proxy, yes. like the proxy yes. army. They arm these terrorists to get rid of this uh, political system, yes. which is secular. Yes. I'm talking about since Afghanistan. To, yes. Okay, we're not saying that our political system is flawless, has many flaws, and it needs to reform. But this is not the way to reform it, not by, by using terrorism. No, no. This is not the way to reform it. And then they, they, they bring these terrorists, and then the terrorists take over, and then now you have a good enough reason to go there and invade. Course, because yeah. you have now terrorism yeah. took yeah. over a country. Yeah. Guess what? We don't we didn't have a single terrorist in 2003. Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein did not have a single terrorist in 2002. No Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, when, and, and when Nikki Haley was lying in the Security Council, she forgot that this kid that she was carrying the picture first, uh, this is not the symptoms of Sarah, and she forgot to look even closely at the neck injury of this kid. You know? Yeah. And, and then, and then uh, she forgot to mention, where are the WMDs, the Iraqi WMDs? Where are they? Yeah. We are still looking for them. Show, show us the Iraqi WMDs, and then we will believe you. Yeah. Um, you have um, a very wide media profile, obviously very good English speaking, and you've been interviewed on Western media. In, in, in our country, we see you interviewed on Channel 4. Um, it's a very one-sided interview. They, they come with their narrative yeah. and they... I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Jon Snow, for instance, he always refers to the Syrian government as the regime. Yeah. And he always says that uh, the Syrian government, you know, he calls it the regime. The Syrian regime is guilty of war crimes, is, yeah. is targeting civilians. We know that. Moderate that's rebels. And, and and moderate moderate rebels. rebels, yes. I don't know what the yeah. definition of moderate rebels is. Exactly, um, we have to ask uh, John knows. Kerry about this, uh, yes. Hillary Clinton. They so invented this too. How do you feel, I, it's, I think it's really important that you do these interviews to the West, but how do you feel that, that you come across in, in Western media? Do you feel it's effective? It's effective, but we need to do it uh, mm -hmm. on a wider scale, and we need more people to talk, you know, to tell the truth, yeah. such as yourself. We need more delegations to come, and we, uh, we are willing to, you know, host them and take them, and, and, uh, and you know, they, they can have free time interviewing whoever they want. Mm -hmm. I mean, Many delegations, when they came to Eastern Aleppo during the liberation process, they were free to talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. They talked to the, the people from Eastern Aleppo. They, they asked them all these questions. Are you, uh, what happened? Is it true that the army was shooting at you? Is it true? It was all lies. Yeah. It was all fake. It was yeah. all lies. We kept hearing uh, for six months, maybe one year, the last hospital in Aleppo, the last doctor in Aleppo. Exactly. And it was now the seven-year-old now is, uh, is writing is writing her own book now. We're gonna see it's gonna see this book in the in New York Times bestseller now in yeah. Bars and Nobles and Borders and yeah. in all these places. This is, she, is she now in Turkey, I think. Yes. yes, and she doesn't know how to speak English, yeah. and her dad is Al Qaeda. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So this yeah. is insane. Yeah. This is insane. Um, Professor Tim Anderson from, from Sydney, where Jamal is from, yeah. he calls this the dirty war on Syria. It's very and, dirty. And it's dirty in the media manipulation. It's very dirty. I, I've not known anything like it. Okay, we had WMD in Iraq, but the Syria crisis is a whole different ball game when it comes to media manipulation. Exactly. Look what happened, look what happened in, the, in the latest massacre that they committed. Yeah. First of all, they stopped the convoy of buses of the Kafriya and Fua civilians. 5,000. They were supposed to enter Aleppo a day earlier. Mm -hmm. They stopped them in the violation of the deal. Why did you stop them? Because they demanded, they put extra conditions on the previously agreed mm -hmm. agreement. Previously agreed and signed. Why? Why? They stopped them for one day. Then they starved them and then they brought the potato chips and they threw it on the ground because these are infidel. These are not human mm -hmm. in the buses. Yeah. The infidel. Infidel like animals, so they have to eat from the ground. We we do not treat them like animals, yeah. like humans. This is eyewitness people, because these people came to Aleppo and they told, they told us what happened. Mm -hmm. And then they sent the truck bomb. The truck bomb is one of their factions who did not agree on the deal or who demanded a piece of the pie, of the Qatari pie, because the Qatar apparently paid $35 million to the Russia to facilitate the deal. So other hardline fact, uh, uh, you know, factions want a piece of the pie. Why are we left out? So they wanted to breach the deal. Yeah. So they, we you know that the guy here himself who was driving the truck, pictured himself. 
His name is Samir, he pictured himself, and he, and, you know, it's all videotaped. Yeah. The blue truck. So they hit these civilians. Now, so far, 116 kids were killed. 116. 200 more are missing. They are missing. They're, they're, nobody knows what, where, where they are now. Yeah. When, when the truck uh, exploded, many relatives and friends and the big convoy, they wanted to help their, uh, you know, their families. They were held at gunpoint. They shot at them. They said, stay here. Don't move. Then they brought the white helmets. Okay. So the white helmets were close by. They were close by. The, they knew. Actually, actually, the white helmets are these terrorists themselves. Yes. They just put the, the, the AK-47 yeah. and they put the white, put the white helmet. And now, now the manipulation began. Yeah. Like they care about the civilians, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You care about the civilians. Why did you help them hostage for one day? Yeah. Why didn't you allow them to enter with hostage? Yeah. Why did you allow one of you to bomb them and kill them? Only to carry them yeah. later on? Yeah, the media. Exactly, exactly. It's sick. You know the, um, the Telegraph newspaper in <laughs> London, they described the children that were killed in this attack as Pro gov Assad. Yeah, government supporters. The kids? Children, the government supporters. Exactly. It's, exactly. It's, exactly. I don't know how they exactly. can sleep at night Not only describing that. that. Not only that. The, the HDS, the, the main entity of Al Qaeda in Syria, Hayat Tahrir al Sham, they call it, right? Yeah. They also issued praise for the White Helmets. So they and the Academy Awards. Yes. And possibly Nobel Prize. Exactly. And Nikki Haley. And, you know, maybe. Uh, Theresa May. Exactly. Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. All of these guys. Yeah. They praised the White Helmets alongside with Al Qaeda. Yeah. With Bin Laden mm -hmm. If this is the case, why did you go there and fight Bin Laden there in Afghanistan? Yeah. Was he an Afghan rebel or was he a terrorist? There's no logic to, There's to no their, logic. To their Absolutely. policies at Absolutely. all. Um, one of the things that we saw in, in Aleppo was just the, um, the spirit, the, this defiant spirit of the people. Yes. Um, even some shops in the east were now open again yes. amidst yes. all the destruction. I saw, I saw a couple of days ago, I saw a factory in a, 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 a run-down building. The, bu the building is collapsed. Yeah. The next building is collapsed completely, and there's a factory still working. This is defiance. Uh, that is defiance, yes. and that, that was inspiring, and it was it was very emotional to see. But to to see life trying to keep going and, and to reestablish yes. itself, yes. Um, it, it struck me that the I, I think I knew this already from following Syria for five years that that the Syrian people their spirit cannot be broken, and as much destruction <coughs> to infrastructure as happens that could be rebuilt. Yes. The spirit and the defiance yes. isn't going to be broken. Yes. And, and I think the West is slowly waking up to this fact that they've come to a country that's not like Libya uh, or Iraq. This is not the first time we, we see uh, invasions or colonial powers yeah. or terrorism. This is the oldest... Long, the, long the, time. The oldest uh, human civilization in the world. Mm -hmm. Aleppo, by UNESCO, is considered 12,000 years old. How did, you, how did you think this city survived for 12,000 years? For 5,000 years? Strength of the people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and it's that was to me that was amidst all the, the carnage and the rubble, uh, which was so upsetting to see, the people were inspiring, and, and it was beautiful. We, we, I was made to feel very welcome. We spoke to um, many civilians in the streets, and they told yes. us what happened over the last exactly. five years. Exactly. Uh, their voices are never heard in the West. So we have much footage and video footage and, and yes, testimony we, we that are, we, we, are relying we will take back. We are us. relying on your honest efforts and uh, this is a good effort and uh, we thank you for this. Um, I thank you. I thank you on behalf of my city also. Uh, everybody's happy that you're doing this and we are willing to offer any kind of uh, support to facilitate your, your, your transfer of truth. You're telling the truth. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, I mean, my, this is my, my second visit to Syria. I yeah. came here with again with Jamal's group, and, and I have to thank Jamal um, because he's this is his fifth uh, big tour, international tour of peace. This time we came not as tourists but as, as journalists and activists, and so we've been given um, unrestricted access to the places we wanted to see. And again, there's a theory in in the Western media that. The journalists in, in the West can't get visas yes. to come here. Not only that, not only that. When we when we when we uh, receive also parliamentarians from the EU, like Belgium, French, they tell us that if we speak the truth, they, or they immediately accuse us of being 
on, on, on the payroll of Assad apologists. Yes, or Assad apologists. Exactly, yes. exactly. We will face the so same can, when we go home. So you cannot fight terrorism? If you fight terrorism, then you are yeah. an Assad apologist? Yes. Okay, fine. Yeah. It's, it's better than being a terrorist. Yes, it's a warped <laughs> logic. As I say, we can't fight it with logic. We have to. Yeah. I, I, yeah. What, what I find is really effective is is raw testimony, raw video of Syrians, and, and Jamal was doing really good translation, and that has gone back and been well received back at home. And there's so many people that that didn't know the truth of Syria because they watched the BBC, they watched the exactly. Telephone. Exactly. They're brainwashed. Slowly, exactly. We're, we're we're finding out. We're, these people are finding out. They tell their friends. They tell their friends. That's the way. Exactly. Will, that's the way the truth will come out slowly. Exactly. Not by the big media organisations, but by small grassroots. The big media organisations, they are liars. When, when, when I took them to an area run by the FSA, not Nusra, not ISIS, free Syrian army, the most moderate of all. That the guy who was running this area was invited to Geneva, Brigade 16. They saw exactly the terrorism he was doing. They saw the hell cannon factories. They saw torture prisons inside the basement of occupied factories. They saw this guy was responsible for killing more than 5,000 Aleppo civilians by this health camp. And he's invited as a rebel, as, as a revolutionary from yeah. Che Guevara yeah, yeah. to Geneva to talk with us about, you know, sharing uh, power. It's crazy. They, they have to understand their problem is not with Assad or the Assad regime. Their problem is with us. Yes. This is, we are their enemy. Mm. We and, are their enemy. And, and also, the, 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 there's a, a media war against the people of the West, against this, uh, the, the audience, the news audience, because all the time they fabricate stories. And, and so they, they try and keep us ignorant of, of the truth of Syria. Exactly. So it's, I, I think one of the, the enemies of the political establishment and the, the corporate media and the military establishment in the West is an informed population. If people are informed, they would protest their government. And that's what needs to happen in the West. Exactly. On, on the streets exactly. of London, if we protest and, and get one million people like before Iraq, exactly. then maybe government policy will change. Exactly. We, we, we are relying on this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you know, <coughs> and this, is, this can stop the killing of one million people. Mm -hmm. And end this war. Yeah. And, and you know, stop terrorism. And as long, as soon as we stop funding and transfer of terrorists and, the, and their transfer of personnel, this war ends in a few months. Yeah, exactly. I said that last time, and it's it's still happening. But it, it's the West is still fueling this conflict. Exactly. And they are still allowing Qatar and Saudi Arabia to fuel this conflict. We have uh, leverage in the West because we sell Saudi Arabia weapons. We, we provide the government and the royal family with protection. We could easily say, stop this. Stop funding and fueling this conflict. Exactly, Mike. Look, look at the hypocrisy. Look what the Saudis are doing in Yemen. Yeah. And again, atrocities. With, with British weapons. Atrocities that we're doing. Okay. Look at the Saudis and Qataris are doing inside Europe by, by, by funding, building mosques, only to produce new Wahhabis, new terrorists. Yeah. Now your problem in Europe is not a traveling terrorist. You have homegrown terrorists radicalized by another homegrown terrorist. Yeah. So you have a, a homegrown entity of, of radicalization. So not only this poor young man goes to the hospital, to the mosque and being radicalized, the sheikh, the clergyman, is also homegrown. Is also second or third generation. Yeah. Why? Because this money that is building these mosques and hundreds of mosques, yeah. top thousands, are all coming from Saudi and Qatar. That means what? That means what? Heavy money. Yeah. Th these mosques are not in, in the, the our form of Islam. They yeah. are in Both their Christian. form, yes. in the radical form of Islam. Yeah. So, in a push of a button, they can they can recruit thousands of Europeans. That's what they did in Syria. If any disagreement with them in the future of any European country, they can recruit thousands of terrorists. They already have them. And they can channel them towards any nation that they want yeah. to destroy. Yeah. In, in Aleppo, we saw um, a children's textbook, which was... Uh, same as Saudi. Wahhabi, it was printed in Jeddah. In, exactly. In the same as they teach their students and in Saudi. Wahhabi the ISIS ideology. One, the ISIS one. The same one, Kitab al Tawheed, the same one they teach in Saudi schools. If you go to any Saudi schools, yeah. they have the same one. Yeah. I, uh, I need to go, but uh, because I'm leaving today, uh, they will leave tomorrow, but because I can't go to Lebanon, the uh, Australian government asked the Lebanese government not to put me in, in anyway, so I'm flying to Lebanon, but it was.
And I don't know how much of this I can verify, but um, the prison in Aleppo, um, I've seen uh, there was many people died from tuberculosis, which is, uh, well, it was suspected tuberculosis, I think, um, which is a disease that should was eradicated in Syria, like most yes, of the world. Yes. Uh, and it's come back possibly because of uh, lack of malnutrition, lack of malnutrition, and, 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 and the blockade of the West, the Western blockade. We cannot get our raw materials to manufacture medicines. Yeah. We cannot get the food. We cannot import the gas, yeah. the diesel, uh, you know, the oil. Uh, uh, we cannot uh, do the money transfers like we want. Yes. So they put on us a economic blockade since 2011. Since 2011. But this doesn't affect the government, this affects the people. The people, yeah. the people. This was the same yes. in Iraq. I remember um, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright at the time, and somebody said, is the price worth paying? The price being 500,000 children under the age of five had died because of yes. the Iraqi yes. sanctions. Yes. So they know that this hurts people yes. and children. Yes. And without being effective changing government policy. Exactly, it doesn't do any effect. Yeah. But to starve the people and to punish the people. Yeah. Um, and you know when people get punished, they stick with their government. <laughs> yes. They don't. They don't. Uh, they don't stick with whoever is punishing them. Again, the logic is yes. that if we make if we make the people suffer, they change the government. But that that doesn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. This is a crime. Yes. Yeah, it's a course. crime against humanity. Yeah. What they did. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's always uh, economic crimes happen before yes. uh, violent yes. crimes, and yes. there's there's economic uh, economic crime against Syria and a violent crime against Syria. Yes. Um, it's actually quite a long established conspiracy. Um, yes, since early days. Yeah, since we, 2009. Since before, before we know everything. Yeah. Since we, we don't know anything, what was going on. Yeah. They, we were put on sanctions yeah. as a nation. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, there was a video uh, interview with uh, a General Wesley Clark from the US, and he listed uh, seven countries that were going to be invaded yes, I back know. in 2005. Yes, I know. Libya, Iran, exactly. Sudan, exactly. Um, Syria was on the list, you know. Yes. Um, and so this is long established plan. Um, yes. We also but we thought that they, they, they were talking about uh, a direct invasion. Yeah. We never thought that they would use Proxy. proxies, Islamists as proxies. Yeah. The worst kind, this, these are zombies. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Zombies on steroids. Yeah. They're, they're, they're savages, like what you see in the movies. Yeah. Exactly. We, we, we find it hard to understand how how they can be so savage, as you say, because it's it's not in our heart. And, and one wonders, are these people even human? Um, no, the they're things, not. The things they're that not. they've done have just been horrific. They're not human. I mean, one one guy, one guy, uh, uh, two months ago, in near Damascus in Kabul, he sent his two daughters as suicide bombers. You saw that? Yes, yes. Two daughters. And he, you know, uh, wished them good luck. And their mother came and kissed them. And one of them, one of these daughters, entered the police station. And she was so scared. So she asked, where is the bathroom? She went to inside the bathroom. So her dad saw her from a distance, entering the police station, and he bombed her. He set, he set the bomb. Remote control. Yeah. Remote control yeah. bomb. So the daughter, seven years old, or eight years old, she exploded inside the bathroom of the police station. No one was killed. Because she was so scared. Mm. See, this is God intervention in this. Yeah. Yeah. If she had to enter inside the main hallway, scores of people would have yeah. been killed. How can you send your own daughter and yeah. you call yourself a rebel? No, you call yourself, you know, moderate, moderate rebel. Yeah. This ideology is the Saudi ideology, yeah. the Wahhabi yeah. ideology yeah. that we we find everywhere. Yeah. Um, just returning to the Aleppo prison, and again, I, I don't know, I haven't had confirmation of this, but I, I read that the some of the prisoners were actually fighting with. The Syrian yes. Arab army yes. against the terrorists, yes. who, who again were holding those captive for and three hostage years. And, for three years. and starving them. For three, more than three years, this, uh, the, the central prison was uh, surrounded by Qaeda yeah. gangs. They wanted to conquer this prison. Yeah. And the prisoners held weapons with the police to defend the, the, to defend the prison. That's incredible. So I, I'm guessing that um, we spoke to the Minister of Reconciliation yesterday, yeah. and I'd met him last time I was here, and he, he talked about the, the amnesty program. And back in September, uh, I think 20,000 had taken yes. up this offer of yes. amnesty, which at the time was fantastic. Yes, the reconciliation, yeah. Now it's yeah. 82,000, yes. which is real progress. Yes. I've, I've never heard of such a program yes. while during the crisis, maybe yes. afterwards when the peace yes. comes. Yes, we are telling them, I mean, no matter what you did, no matter that you joined some terror gangs, 
no matter if you really fought under Qaeda control, if you are willing to submit your uh, your weapon and, uh, and and be a normal citizen again, yeah. we will forgive you. That is incredibly progressive. No nation in the world did this. No, no. They don't want that. They don't want that. And also, uh, he mentioned there was um, about 30,000 prisoners that have been pardoned. And yes. I, I assume that some of those yes. would have been from Aleppo when, yes. they, when they fought with the police. And, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so this, this idea that there's... Uh, 300, they were the number. Okay. There were 300. The uh, prisoners that were locked in the, inside the prison, there were like around 300 or so. Okay. Some of them, they had 15 years, 10 years, you know, uh, criminals. Yeah. But they fought, they defended the prison, they defended the police. So they were pardoned. Okay, and that, that's an incredible yeah. story that yeah. we just wouldn't hear in, in, yes. in Western media. Yes, you know, there was a movie made about this. We made a movie about this. Okay. And, but uh, this, is, this is like a really, really good material for any, any yeah. production. Absolutely. I mean, how can a prisoner like uh, fight alongside the police yes. against Al-Qaeda? Yeah. Uh, this is really amazing. Yeah, it's and they had to, they had to, uh, they had to grow their own food. They had to invent ways to, to make le electricity. To, to, to uh, reserve water, to, to have enough supplies. They had to invent many ways. It was like really survival miracle yeah. that this, they were able to survive for more than three years, <coughs> completely surrounded from all walls by the, the brutal, the most brutal fighting against. Again, this, this comes back to the, um, the defiant spirit, the resourcefulness, uh, yes. the intelligence, yes. and, and the sense of uh, community across Ethnic divides and religious exactly, divides. Exactly. Uh, the people of Syria are above all Syria. Exactly. Like an example of this, like in the, now, just a few weeks ago, when the when the Qaeda, you know, when I when I say the Qaeda, is I'm taking this information from them. Yeah. It's not because they publish it, it themselves. They publish themselves. They sh they showed us the picture of Golani. The Golani. Who is the Golani? This is the question that we have to ask these hypocrites politicians in the West. Who is Golani? Golani is the Zawahiri appointed man in Syria. Who is Zawahiri? Is Bin Laden's lieutenant and successor. He is in Tora Bora. Zawahiri is in Tora Bora now. Okay? And the Americans sent troops to invade Afghanistan to get rid of him. Yeah. They were able to kill Bin Laden, but Zawahiri is still there. Zawahiri appointed a guy to represent him in Syria. His name is Golani. Okay? The Golani ran the battle. Of, uh, for the moderate rebels in Aleppo, he ran it. He he issued pictures, running uh, the show but on a map of Aleppo, issuing orders. He was the main commander, and the Golani also in the Hama, the Khan Sheikhoun area, yeah. controlled by him. In this area also, he runs the show. Also, he issued pictures, propaganda pictures that he is the main military commander and he with his you know assistants running the show. These pictures we have. They issued these pictures, not us. Mm -hmm. It's from them. Yeah. From, it's from them. Now, this Golani guy in, in the in the uh, in the Hama area, he tried to uh, to conquer two small towns. One is called Kamhani, and one is called Muharde. Muharde is completely Christian. Kamhani, guess what? Completely Sunni. The women, the children, old men, old women, the kids, bare arms their arms to defend their towns against the Qaeda gangs they were not able to come till this day Baharde Christian and nearby another town Sunni 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 Muslim the women the women themselves old women carrying weapons to defend their own families their own towns against these Qaeda gangs that they claim that they came for you know to defend the Sunnis Guess what? Is Aleppo is what? The city of Aleppo is what? It's Sunni. Sunni yeah. We have no Alawites. We have no Shiites in Aleppo. Only the Lubbal and Zahra. Yeah. Small, uh, two small villages 14, 15 kilometers away. 70,000 people. But 3 million people are what? 80% yeah. yeah, Sunni, 20% Christian. Yeah. So how could you do this to Aleppo, the Sunni? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. How could you do this to Mosul? Mm. In Iraq? Yeah, how yeah, come no one thing. is talking about Mosul? Yeah. How come no one is mentioning Mosul? You know that scores of civilians are being killed yeah. Again. by airstrikes? Yeah. No mention. See, I think this comes down to, um, in, in the Western media, they, they have an ideology themselves, and it's to do with worthy and unworthy victims. Exactly. So a worthy exactly. victim is one where they can blame Assad or exactly. Putin. Exactly. An unworthy victim is a victim of British collateral damage. Collateral damage yes. yes, it's a mistake. 
It's yes. they didn't target them, it's not deliberate. That's what exactly. they say. And so the unworthy victims, they never get their names in the newspapers. Exactly. Or if they do, they say the children are government supporters, that exactly. kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's disgraceful exactly. how, how exactly. the media is manipulated. This is another, another form of terrorism. It is. This absolutely. is media terrorism. Yes. We have commercial terrorism, we have military terrorism, and we have media terrorism. Yeah. This is terrorism. Yeah, absolutely. It's a crime against peace, is, yes. is the yes. official crime. Yes. And I think that if, if Western journalists had done their job from 2010, 2011, this war would be over, this crisis exactly. would be finished already. Exactly. Um, and again, that comes back to Western audiences not being informed and not knowing the truth. Um, but the more I come to Syria, and the more I go back, the more people realize, how come Mike's still alive? And, and he keeps going back to Syria. They keep asking me, hey, why are you going back there? And my family say, isn't it dangerous? And I say, watch, I'll go and I'll come back, and I'll come back and really happy. And I do, every time I, I come to Syria, I feel, I feel uh, Mike, privileged. Wait. You are now at the front line in the battle against terrorism. Mm. Globally. Line. This is global. This is the front line. If God forbids we fail in this battle, where do you think this terrorism is going to go? Everywhere. To your family yeah. in the UK, yeah. to everybody's family yeah. in the West. We will pay the price now, but you will pay the price tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. So let's end it here. Mr. Chiavi, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> I hope, I hope you come back soon. My later. pleasure. Sina, Ahla, Sifa, Ala Ayo. I'm going to film the film that we did. I'm going to film the film that we did. I'm going to film the film that we did. He came to us in 2012. He told us that the Nusra came to his factory in western Plaza, in, uh, in the western in the eastern countryside of Aleppo and stole the factory okay and six months after that they used these weapons against our troops they used these chemicals we had 16 soldiers dead and many civilians they all broke the university as a result, the Syrian government requested the UN to send an investigative committee. The UN said, okay, we will send you the uh, dedicated investigative committee by the UN. Yes. The committee arrived at our request to investigate the Khan al-Assal attack. They arrived where? To the Four Seasons Hotel. In I was in the Four Seasons Hotel myself. I was in the Four Seasons Hotel. I saw them. They arrived the second day as they were going to Khan Asad. It was Putin. The, the second day. What a stupid government would ask the UN to send an investigative committee and wait until the investigative committee arrives to its capital and use a chemical weapon yeah. one kilometer away <laughs> from where yeah. the investigative committee is. <laughs> Again, logic. <laughs> right. Why do they give this? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And did not go to Khan of course. They could not go. Yeah. Because they were tied up in the Huta. Yeah. But even that, that, that investigation, they... Turned out that we are missing. Yes. Even this one. Yeah. But did they do, did they take any action against it? Against, uh, uh, of course no, not. No, no, of course not. But, but the, that Gutu incident, um, it's still believed in the Western media. They still say that yes, that, is, that is true. I know. And, and the, the recent yeah. incident, they were they were saying chemical weapons by the Syrian government within one hour, you know, before within, any within one second. Within one second, of course, yes. It was all no, made up. Yeah. All so they, they don't investigate, they don't ask for evidence. You saw, you saw the tweets that they talked about it before? Yes. And uh, they saw the picture when they were wearing the orange a month before? Yeah. A month before? Yeah. This is the, was that the, the red person? Mm -hmm. No, 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 this is, this is, uh, uh, this is the same location a month before. See, this is the location that was hit, look. This is a military location. Right. No schools, nothing. Yeah. Not a civilian location. Yeah. Okay. This is the same location. Look, look at the walls. Look at the walls. Look, this is what they issue. Okay. Confirm is what I say. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Read this, smart, smart. Read it. Keep it in mind. Okay. This is what they say. Look, what civilians are doing here? Actors. Actors, exactly. This is what they say. 
These are injuries of kids, different kind of injuries. This is the same location. Look, the bunker yeah. that I just saw, showed yeah. you when you saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the kid being carried to the bunker. See? Fabrication. Fabrication. And look at this picture now. Show you another picture. Very important picture. This is what Firas Karam said, Orient guy. Tomorrow we will launch a media campaign to cover the chemicals in Hamam. Tomorrow. This is one day ahead yeah, of time. Yeah. Yeah. He said that. Thank you. This is their guy. Yeah. Okay. This is a month ago before. Ah, I didn't see this. Yes. See? Yeah. Same bunker. Yeah. See? So it's pre planned. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we saw the uh, the white helmets. They were saying initially this was sarin, and yet they were, they were treating victims with their hands, and yeah. they, they would have been there. Yes. And then the next day, and the Shahrat Airport. There's, how come there's no contamination? Yes, exactly. Journalists were there the next day after the U.S. tomahawk strikes. Could you? you uh, maybe you can't tell us, but we read that there were only 23 missiles that, that actually hit the target of, yes, of 59. Yes. So so were the others. Um, shot down by Syrian defences, or they're not, they're not telling. Uh, well, they were shot down. They were uh, with Russian. They were uh, not shot down. Uh, electronic warfare. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's that's the Russian. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. But they, I don't know if they, 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 they said that you know officially. No, and some but some Russian analysts have said, said that. Trump said 59. Yeah. 23 hit the, the airport. Yeah. That's Nine people were killed, civilians, four kids, and some aircraft was was damaged. Yes, nine aircrafts or so yeah. were damaged. Um, but it's ineffective. The airport, after one hour, <laughs> was still yeah. After one hour. And, and obviously, the, the claim was that there was chemical weapons depot at that airport. They struck it recklessly, if that was the case. But then, as you say, journalists were there the next morning, and there was no chemicals in the air exactly. in the vicinity. Exactly. Um, I don't know if you... Um, there was uh, another chemical weapons alleged attack in Hula. Um, and the BBC had a team, a panorama documentary team there, and they said that it was a napalm attack. And, and to this day, they maintain that this was the Syrian we're government we're using we're napalm. We don't have napalm. Of course, but, uh, but the BBC, we have a, a colleague of ours in, in England, and he's gone through the BBC complaints procedure See, for one the BBC, year. The BBC, they do it better than Channel 4. Yes, more sophisticated. Yeah, they, they do it, the lie, they make it more like crystallized, yeah. you know, more polished yeah. than Channel 4. Yeah. Channel 4 lies like just here. Yes. <laughs> the BBC, they try to act objective. They try. Mm. And they put the lies. You know? Mm. They put the poison in the food. Channel 4 gives you the poison like this. Yeah. Exactly. What are you looking for, Mike? It's Robert Stewart's... Um I mean, he's a hero for doing all that work investigation work himself, isn't he? He's in one man's investigated, exposing the BBC lies of the, this yeah. programme. Yeah, one man. The, the other thing the BBC use is uh, one guy who lives in England in Coventry called the Syrian Observer yeah, Team of Human Rights. Yes, mm -hmm. you know him. Um, they know that this man is discredited. His, exactly. his sources exactly. are partisan sources. Uh, One-sided. You want to help But they something? use him all the time. You want to help in something? Musa al Amr. You heard of him? Musa al Amr. This is the main Qaeda media person. Like, runs the media for oh, yeah, yeah, okay. He lives in London. Really? <laughs> yes. We will seek him out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dig him in the internet. Mm -hmm. Saw his pictures. You can see his pictures with Jogolani, with known terrorist groups. Yeah. Watch his videos, how he talks, how he praises these terror groups. How, how can this guy live in London? How can this guy have an apartment in London, yeah. an office in London? Mm -hmm. Do you know in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, Bin, Bin Laden had an office in London? Yeah, when he was a rebel. Yeah. He was a rebel. The freedom rebel. fighter, they call him. Freedom it. fighter, yeah.
He has millions of followers. This guy. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. This is the goal. Huh? Yeah. Look. Sheikh Al Fatih. Abi Muhammad Al Golani. Meaning the conquering uh, Sheikh. Like uh, like Muhammad II who opened Istanbul. Yeah. The conquering. You know? This is Musa Amar. This is the the winner of the Freedom Press Award, Hadi Abdullah. Yeah. He's, he was the take the, the photograph for yes. Cameron. Yes. 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 yes, yes, look, look. Uh, white helmets. Yeah, with the Golani. Look. Many pictures, many, many pictures. Yeah. Many pictures. All his work is with the Nusra. All his work. All his work. Mm -hmm. I'll show you other pictures. This is really sick. This is sick. Look, this is during the attack on Aleppo. When they were attacking Aleppo. Look at these Saudi, Turkestani, Uzbek. Qaeda. Nusra. They say we are Nusra. Look at Nusra. This is the man from London? Yes. Yes. How is he not arrested? I don't know. I don't know. His name's not known in, among the English speaking public at all. He's not a known Of course. Name, you know? Of course. Someone's but he must be what? getting protection from you know, military intelligence, MI6. Did you see how Jaysh Jish, Jish al-Islam, the, the, Allosh, the, main, the, uh, the chief negotiator of the, of the opposition, mm. what he did in the, in the Duma? Look what he did. He put the, the women inside the cage. Oh, cadence. we did see that, yeah. yeah. See? see? He put the women inside the cage. Yeah. Kidnap women. Yeah. These are kidnapped women. Mm. That's him. Look. Yeah. It's just... This is sick. Oh, this is sick. <laughs> 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 this is NATO weapons inside East Aleppo. I took a picture. Could you send that to us? I'll show you something else. Gratis. <laughs> From Bulgaria. <laughs> A lot, a lot comes from uh, what was coming from Libya through Romania yes. and then Turkey. Libya. And Libya. Yeah. We saw weapons coming from Libya with the dirt on. They didn't even clean them. Yeah. This was Clinton's rat line. Yes. Coming out. Immediately sent here. Yeah. This is me and Vanessa. December 13. We were the first civilians to enter <laughs> Eastern Aleppo. <laughs> Vanessa, me, no, 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 and Jan. Uh, no, no, uh, not Jan. No, yeah, Jan. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. Do you know we, um, Alison and I went to see Vanessa give a, speak, a talk in London and we had the White Helmets fan club protesting outside. <laughs> fan club? One of them even wore a White Helmet, a uh, White Helmet, and they spoke to, they said um, uh, Vanessa was a sad apologist and a, a massacre, what was it? Um, uh, genocide denier mm. and things like this. They came into the meeting and let off uh, stink bombs inside the meeting. And so we had to, I had to sort of be Vanessa's <laughs> protection for that evening. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. We, we, when, when she, because we, we carried on, we finished, there was a room was packed full of people and she gave her talk and a video. This is her just after the liberation of Aleppo. So she showed the video for This is the East Aleppo Stick Council. Seriously, seriously. That's incredible. This is what they want. They want these guys to rule. That's incredible. This is the, this is a, a collection. They had a group, unity, of various terror groups. Yeah. Nusra, Zinki, Ahrar Sham, all of them. They all were happy. They all believed. They're all fundamentalists. This is what Dimistora said. Let's give them autonomy. Right. These guys. Do you know, we, we saw something funny recently. There was, uh, in Saudi Arabia, there was uh, a conference on women. And there were no All women. Guys. There were All no guys. women in the audience, <laughs> yeah. and no women on the panel. <laughs> Look at this. You probably saw this. This is during the Battle of Aleppo. This is the Golani himself. He revealed his face. This is the map of Aleppo. I can point my house. <laughs> they were running. <laughs> this, this is when Mahesani was able to breach inside East Aleppo. This is the Mahesani, right? The rebel. Mahesani is a known guy. He's on the U.S. terrorist. <laughs> With all these foreign troops. Okay? This is when he was received by those in East Aleppo, like a hero. Yeah. Now I'll show you something shocking. This is who? Robert Ford, U.S. Ambassador to Syria, 2012. With who? With who? This guy is the commander of the FSA. 
in northern Syria. Mm -hmm. Colonel, detected Colonel Abdul Jabbar Abidi with Robert Ford. Abdul Jabbar, this is the boss of Abdul Jabbar Abidi. Riyad al Assad, the founder of the FSA, founder with Taliban of Syria. Watch this. Abdul Jabbar Abidi with ISIS. With Robert Ford, with ISIS. Mm. Could you send some of these pictures? Because I've been making the point that the, the West is colluding with radical Islam for so long. And, yes. and we have historians back home, and they look through declassified This is files. US, US terror listed, UN terror listed. Mahesani, with the, the press, the Freedom Press Award, Hadi Abdullah. Mm. That's incredible. Mm. Friend. What else? What else? What else? What else? Yes. What else? Do you know in um, during Libya? Send me a WhatsApp. I can okay. send it to you easily. Yeah. Okay. In in Libya, I actually uh, called the police and said, um, I know somebody who's financing terrorism in London, and and I never mentioned names, but the name was going to be uh, David Cameron and William Hague, <laughs> who was the foreign secretary at the time, and the police took down the, the incident. Uh, but they never called me back, and so uh, maybe five months afterwards, I phoned up and I said, I've, I've reported this, I've not, no one's been in contact, and the woman said, um, I see the report, but everything has been redacted, I can't see, it's all been classified. <laughs> What's going on? And, and obviously the, the, the story was that the British government were arming LIFG, Libyan Islamist yeah, Fighting yeah, Group, yeah, 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 who were a, a terrorist group recognised as such in England after many, many years of, of not course, being recognised. But yeah, this this has been going on, but it's it's never been so where blatant was, where as was here. Baghdadi, Baghdadi, where was he? He was in, he was in, in Abu Ghraib prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was locked. Yeah. He was locked. Yeah. They let him loose. So he worked with Zakawi as an assistant to Zakawi. Remember them? Yeah. Yeah. And then he formed an entity called Dawla Islamiyya in Iraq. It was not ISIS. It was ISI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he had an order from Zawahiri in Afghanistan to issue to to establish a Qaeda link in Syria in 2012. So he formed the Nusra. Mm -hmm. Baghdadi formed the Nusra. Read uh, Patrick Cockman. Yeah. The ISIS. Yeah. Yeah. Read it. So when he formed the Nusra, he appointed the Golan. Baghdadi appointed the Golan. The ISIS guy appointed the Nusra. Yeah. And the Nusra ended. The Nusra grew stronger, strong, strong, strong. So they started having a direct link to Zawahiri by passing Baghdadi in, in Iraq. Mm -hmm. So he was angry and he said, okay, if this is the case, I'm going to expand into Syria. So he took most of the Nusra fighters and he Across established the, the branch in Syria and he called it all ISIS. Mm -hmm. It was only ISI, yeah. not ISIS. Yeah. I mean, this, this is part of the media manipulation, I think, is the, the continual rebranding of these groups. So yes. no one, no one has a, a good fix on who's who. Um, what does the BBC say? The uh, the group known as ISIS. They won't actually call them ISIS directly. Well, they call them the so-called Islamic so -called State. Islamic That's State. It. So yeah. God knows what uh, what name that we we're going to see in the future. Yeah. <laughs> no, what entity? No, seriously. After yeah. after they they finish ISIS in, mm. in Mosul and in Raqqa and Jerusalem, eventually ISIS will disappear. Yeah. But guess what? A new one will come. Before, so, before it was Qaeda. Mm. Only so Qaeda, mm -hmm. Qatar, right? Then, then ISI, then Nusra, then ISIS, then, then what? Yeah. Yeah. Then what? Yeah. Another, yeah. Another, name. Another, another name. Another name, same ideology. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Depends yeah. on which, which country they want to conquer yeah. and divide. Yeah. Do you know there's a, a TV show in England called Downton Abbey, and they had a dog in the show called ISIS. And after ISIS became in, in Iraq and Syria, they had to kill the dog in the TV show. <laughs> And make that into the story. <laughs> Crazy. Well, I have to run. Okay. Thank you again. You're welcome. You're welcome. Real pleasure. You're welcome.